In this short video, we're going to introduce a numerical method for first order initial value problems. So our example problem is y prime equals 2xy with the initial condition that y of 1 must equal 1. Now we can solve this uh, IVP. We know a number of methods that would work, but suppose that I didn't know the solution. And what I want is just an estimate for the value of one point y at the point 1.5. Well, I can start by making the observation that I know the slope at any point on the solution curve. And so it's just going to be the y prime, which has the formula in the differential equation that y prime equals 2x. That would be the slope of the tangent line. And so from our initial condition, we know that the slope at the point 1 comma 1 is 2. So we could use the tangent line approximation at the point 1 comma 1, which remember the tangent line approximation, we usually use L of x because it's also called the linear approximation, is going to be y at 1 plus y prime at 1, that's just our slope there, uh, times x minus 1. So in that case, it would be 1 plus 2 parentheses x minus 1. Now the problem with that is that the linear approximation or tangent line approximation is really only accurate when you're very close to the point of tangency. So if we look at our curve here, we can see that close to the point of tangency, the curve and the tangent line overlap, essentially. But as you move away from the point of tangency, the line diverges from the curve. And then when we get to 1.5, there is a huge gap of almost 1.4 between the exact solution and the solution that we would get by using the tangent line approximation. But what if we use the tangent line approximation not for the entire solution, but only for a, an intermediate step? So suppose that we just go, instead of all the way out to 1.5, we stop at 1.1 and try to get use the tangent line to get an a, approximation of y of 1.1. So we get an approximation from our uh, linear approximation or a tangent line. So now we're only going to use that tangent line approximation from 1, x equals 1 to x equals 1.1. So we get this little line segment here. And we have an approximation or approximate value for 1.1. It's actually y of 1.1 is, after we do the math, 1.2. Now, we know that this value of y, the 1.2 value, is not really on the curve. So I can't say that I'm going to compute a new tangent line approximation. But what I can do is get an approximate L1 uh, using the estimate that you know y1 is about y of 1.1. And then we'll call x1 1.1. So we've moved over on the curve here. We're going to get a new line or line segment that is not going to be a tangent line anymore, but it's going to be an approximation of a tangent line. So we can go ahead and calculate our slope. Our slope, remember, is just y prime, which is 2xy. So I'll calculate that. And now I've got my equation for a second line segment, where I'm going from x equals 1.1 to x equals 1.2. And then when I get to x equals 1.2, so I'll have y of 1.2. I'll have an approximation for y at 1.2. Again, this is not a, a point or a value that lies on the curve. But it's an approximation. So I can use that 
to calculate a third line or line segment starting from x equals 1.2 and going to 1.3 and the way I'll do that is I'll use my fixed point y of 2 my x2 is now at 1.2 and my m2 is going to be of course 2x2 times 2 times y2 so now I've got a slope for a another uh, line or line segment and we can just continue this so we could get a fourth line segment so now when I do this I'm going to start looking for a pattern I'm always shifting over by 0 0.1 so let's call that H H is going to be the amount that we shift over each time and if we go back and look at it, we can see that there's a clear pattern, that y1 is y0 plus m0 times h, y2 is y1 plus m1 times h, y3 is y2 plus m2 times h, and so now to get y4, I'm just going to multiply uh, m3 times h and add y3. So in general, we have a formula, it says that y sub n plus 1 equals y sub n plus m sub n times h. So y4 then, exactly. I'm going to take m3, which will be 2 times x3, y3. Multiply that my delta by h, my delta x, and add my y sub 3. And then use the same formula to get y sub 5 and then I am now at uh, x equals 1.5 so this is my approximation then for y of 1.5 that's what we were trying to find now we can see on the graph here that uh, even though you know the method seems to be a pretty good job it does diverge uh, quite a bit by the time we get to 1.5 and we have a rather large gap here of around 0 0.5 between our uh, approximate or estimated solution and the exact solution. All right, so let's just uh, write down the algorithm for this. So if we, the idea is we're trying to solve a first order differential equation that has y prime equals f of x comma y. So if we have an xy pair, we can evaluate what y prime is. And then we have an initial condition, that y at x naught equals y naught. So we're going to choose our n, or choose our h. I mean, it's, it's equivalent, because h is going to be x minus x naught over n. So you just, how far are you from your initial value? Divide that by n, that will be h. And then you have to do some iterations here, or some steps, right? So in each step, you're going to calculate x sub n. It's going to be x sub n minus 1 plus h, remembering that x naught is part of our initial condition. And then y sub n plus 1 will be y sub n plus f of x sub n times y sub n. And of course, I forgot that there has to be an h here. So this is what before we were calling m sub n. And, but the, remember that's m is our y prime and that comes from f of x comma y. All right. And then that gives us our solution. Then our solution is once we've done, gone through all those iterations, when we get to uh, x sub capital N, that is our target x value, and so the y sub capital N will be our estimated solution at that one particular value. So we're only trying to estimate the solution at one value. All right, so we may want to look at the uh, this notion of the absolute error, that's the error between the approximated value, so the difference between the exact value and the approximated value, and then we take the absolute value of it. 
So in, in our example that we just worked out, the absolute error was uh, 0 0.563. And that's not very good. So how can we get a better estimate? Well, uh, just like when we were talking about a numerical integration, uh, you just uh, will take a smaller value of h, or which is equivalent to choosing a bigger value of n. So I went ahead and did that and used some technology to calculate the estimated solution. So this is what we had originally. So the uh, blue curve here is the exact solution, and then these li yellow line segments tied together at the squares. That was our estimate that we computed. And um, the graph here, just to be aware for clarity, the, the x value here starts at 1. So the uh, y-axis is actually not on this graph. And so we can see that there's a, a fairly large gap uh, when we chose h equals 0 0.1. Well, if I include then the graph of h equals 0 0.5, that's my magenta graph here, which is joined by asterisks, these line segments. So there's more line segments, and I get a better approximation. In fact, it looks like I didn't quite cut the error in half, but it's getting close. So let's take an even smaller value of h. Let's take h equals 0 0.1. And at this point now, you can see that the green line, which corresponds to h equals 0 0.01, is very close to the exact solution. It's certainly significant closer to the h equals 0 0.05 or h equals 0 0.1. Uh, these are the actual numbers for the uh, absolute error for each value of h. And if you'll notice, you know, very roughly, that when I cut the value of h in half, then I was not quite, but getting close to cutting the error in half. And here when I went from h equals 0 0.05 to 0 0.01, that's dividing h by 5, then the error was roughly divided by 5 as well. And that's because Euler's method is what we call a first order method. Uh, first order means that if you were to take the limit of the absolute error and divide it by h, that that would give you a constant, which means that the absolute value of the, the absolute error is roughly proportional to the value of h.